On part three of lecture four, we will discuss the categories of computers and digital devices. Large businesses have information technology needs that are quite frequently a bit larger than what individuals or smaller organizations have. As a result, they need computer systems that can handle a much larger number of users on the system at the same time and they need to be able to process data much more quickly than smaller organizations. These systems are called enterprise systems because they are designed to handle the information technology needs of large enterprises. Computer systems this large typically fall into three types, supercomputers, mainframes, and servers. Supercomputers are generally the fastest computers in the world at the time that they are built. They are designed specifically to do large-scale mathematics. Most large math problems make very heavy use of floating-point numbers, numbers that have exponents or fractional parts or both. The manner in which mathematical operations are performed on these numbers is quite different from how it is done on integers whole numbers that are not so large that you need exponents. While supercomputers can handle large-scale math problems better than other computers, they don't necessarily have such an advantage over other computers when they are doing other forms of computing. Mainframes are large and very expensive computers. These are the machines that can handle hundreds or thousands of users at the same time. They are capable of storing huge amounts of data. These are the computers that can manage the day's transactions on NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. The name comes from the fact that in earlier days these computers could occupy several cabinets in the computer room with the CPU in the main cabinet or main frame. They were also sometimes called Big Iron. Servers are the computers that provide services for other computers to which they are connected over a network. In enterprise systems, they are usually responsible for reading, storing, and transmitting large amounts of data. It is common for a large system to have large servers that can handle company-wide database management. The term personal computer originally meant the desktop computers that IBM introduced in the early 1980s. Up until that time, small, single-user computers were not very user-friendly. They were the province of hobbyists. To make them more appealing to people who were not the typical computer users in 1981, they ran an ad campaign using Charlie Chaplin's little tramp character. These days the term covers computers designed for the needs of one user at a time. And while it is still mostly used to describe Windows based systems, it covers machines that can be on a desktop or can be portable. And by portable we are talking not just about laptop computers but even tablets and smartphones. Desktop computers are designed for exactly what the name describes, sitting on a desk using power from a wall outlet. In most desktop computers, the keyboard is separate, as is the monitor, which gives the user the option of changing it without having to change the whole computer system. They remain fairly popular in offices and schools, although many home users may prefer machines that are more portable. Portable computers run on battery power, but they can use AC wall current if necessary. Typically, all their components fit in a single case, which makes it a lot easier to move it. But they still include ports so you can attach external devices, such as an extra hard disk or a regular mouse. Laptops and notebook computers are essentially the same and the only significant difference, when there is one, is the size of its case. They are designed to be small and light enough 
to be very portable and for its power consumption to be light enough that a battery charge can last several hours. There are some relatively new entries to the portable computer market. Tablets are portable computers with a touch sensitive screen that is used for both input and output. They may use a specialized operating system like Android or Apple's iOS and there are many that use a special version of Windows. Within this category are slate tablets which have a narrow frame screen that uses a virtual keyboard on the screen instead of a physical keyboard. The iPad is an example of this. Cell phones have gained extra functionality over the last decade. The higher end cell phones, known as smartphones, can do almost everything a tablet can and provides telecommunication capabilities over a cell phone network. Like many tablets, they can use Wi-Fi connections instead of cell networks. There are a certain number of niche devices on the market as well. The Raspberry Pi is an example of this. It's a little bigger than a deck of playing cards, but it can be connected to a keyboard and screen and can be used as a single user computer, although it doesn't have the full functionality of a modern PC. But given that a Raspberry Pi kit costs under $100 in 2018, it's still a very good deal. There are also portable media players that are handheld devices that can store and play music, such as the iPod Touch. There is still a market for these, although most people have moved their digital music to their smartphones. It's not just phones that have become smarter, still have watches. Smart watches can include a camera, a compass, a calculator, a fitness tracker. They can also serve as a portal into your tablet or smartphone. Fitbit is only one example of activity trackers that can help you live a healthier lifestyle by tracking your steps when you're walking, and estimate your actual mileage, as well as vitals such as your heartbeat. Appliances have also gotten smarter, with refrigerators, washing machines, and other appliances including small computers called microcontrollers that ensure that your devices work with better energy efficiency. Which kind of digital device should you buy? A desktop computer? A notebook? A tablet? It depends largely on several factors, including how you plan to use it. It depends on where you plan to use it. There are a couple of activities that anyone should stick to if they are trying to make this decision. You need to know how you are going to use it. Taking notes in class suggests a tablet or perhaps a notebook computer. Surfing the web at home suggests a low-end desktop. If you are gaming on your computer, you need one with a very fast processor, plenty of memory, and great graphics. After you know what it is you plan to do with a computer, you need to choose the type of device. Once you know that, you need to figure out how much you need to spend and how much you can afford to spend. But once you decide on a budget, you need to stick to it. Now you need to decide on a platform, the combination of hardware and operating system. You might choose a PC running Windows or a Macintosh running Mac OS. You might need to choose between an iPad running iOS or a Samsung tablet running Android. Lastly, you need to decide on the other specifications, including how much memory and how fast a processor. There are some general guidelines to consider. If you are using your computer for basic applications, such as email, social media, web browsing, and the like, you can do nicely with a computer in the middle of the price range. If you are simply replacing your old computer, 
compatibility with it is important and you want a machine that is backwards compatible or compatible with your older machine even if that older computer is not completely compatible with the new one. If you are thinking about using it for small business, there are computers that are available in stores or online that are intended for basic business needs. If you are a gamer, you need a powerful computer with lots of storage and great graphics. And you would also need this kind of computer for video editing or desktop publishing. If someone who will be using that computer has special needs, you should consider buying adaptive equipment such as a voice synthesizer or one-handed keyboard. And if you're buying specialized peripheral devices, it's a very good idea to make sure that they are compatible with the computer that you're buying. If you are using it for work at school or on the job, make sure that it's compatible with the computers that you use there. And if you use special software, make sure it will run on the new computer. The most popular digital devices that people use are desktop computers, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. The platform that you work on is the operating system that the computer uses as well as its processor. If you are concerned about compatibility, you need to first check the operating system that these computers or devices use. It's important to keep in mind the price range for the various devices in which you are interested. Smartphones cost somewhere between two hundred and nine hundred dollars depending on the brand model and features of the phone similarly tablets can range between two hundred and twelve hundred dollars desktop and laptop computers will cost a bit more than this with their range being broken down roughly into three categories over twelve hundred dollars between five hundred and twelve hundred dollars and under five hundred dollars. Generally, Apple's Macintosh computers are more expensive than PCs and PCs cost more than Chromebooks. These comparisons include comparably equipped computers. Comparison shopping for computers can be a bit like shopping for a new car. There are so many features that some will have and that others won't have, and sometimes it's a little difficult to know what all of these are. In the ad on the slide, it tells us that the computer has an Intel i7 processor, which is one of the most powerful processors on the market in 2018. It includes four megabytes of cache, which will speed up operations because it can find the most recently used data and instructions very quickly. It has 8 gigabytes of memory, which is more than most new computers. It has a solid state drive, which is more reliable on a portable device than a magnetic disk drive. It has a 13 inch screen, which isn't too bad unless you're watching movies or playing video games on it. It has speakers and a webcam built in, and the port that you will need for most of the things you are most likely to connect to the new computer.